It's getting late. Time to go. That beautiful memory is so distant that it has become distorted. Bring along the investigation records. They may come in handy. to meet you. Three weeks ago, I was investigating the mining disaster in Golden Cave. My plan was to interview the survivors. But before I left, I received a message from a colleague who'd been out of reach for days. She'd finally obtained an invitation to a lettuce manor, with the help of an ingenious disguise. I decided to assume her identity, and return to my paradise 
from long ago. The now infamous manor. My gut told me it might be my only chance to unravel its secrets with my own hands. I received an invitation. Please come with me. My apologies, but we weren't expecting you today. The Lord of the Manor isn't here, but another guest has arrived. Has a relaxed demeanor, fits in very well here, and doesn't look like a newcomer. Finely crafted gloves, worn out of habit, but there are signs of wear between the thumb and index fingers. Well dressed in properly maintained clothes, but they were in vogue three years ago. Mr. Kreeberg, this is, uh, the reporter? I see. It's a pleasure to meet you. The pleasure's all mine. You can call me... Hello. I'm Frederick Kreeberg. Mr. Kreeberg, your performance was truly moving. Is it your own creation? It was composed by a friend of my father's. Your father was a composer? Indeed. Many in my family, me included, received the call of Euterpe. Mr. Kreberg, may I ask why you came to this manor? Forgive me. I'm afraid we are not close enough for me to share this secret with you. I'm a little tired, so I plan to return to my room. Farewell. A familiar, yet unfamiliar place. A little old, simply maintained, but cleaned well. oil painting of the Mirror of Venus. It looks almost exactly like the painting from my childhood. Perhaps they are one and the same? This was my father's favorite piano. I clearly remember it being destroyed in that accident, but someone has restored it. This place is exactly like the manor I remember. If my memory isn't deceiving me, of course. Your room is ready. Please come with me.
This is your room. I'll excuse myself if there's nothing else you need. Can I have a moment of your time to ask you a few questions? Of course. Mr. Butler, when did Mr. Kreeberg arrive here? Mr. Kreeberg arrived the day before yesterday. He introduced himself as a composer? Hmm. Not entirely. Mr. Kreeberg is very popular in high society. He's a well-known new classical talent around here. But when it comes to composing, he doesn't seem to have inherited his father's gift. Where is he staying now? Mr. Kreeberg suffers from mild psychasthenia and does not like being disturbed, so we placed him in the guest room at the end of the second floor. To my knowledge, there should be more guests. Have they arrived yet? Besides Mr. Kreeberg and you, there are Mrs. Plinius and Mr. Orpheus. They will arrive as planned tomorrow. Mrs. Plinius? The widow of that famous biologist? Indeed. She's a very famous entomologist herself, and she has quite an insight into the study of plants and animals. Where will she stay? Mrs. Plinius is in the guest room on the western side of the main building's ground floor. It gives her convenient access to the greenhouse. Orpheus? The popular novelist? Indeed, the writer of suspense novels who has made quite a reputation for himself lately. I'm sure you've read him. Where will he stay? Mr. Orpheus is in the guest room on the east side. He seems interested by the Lord's collection in the corridor. Has the Lord made any other plans? Once all the guests have arrived, the Lord will tell you what to do next. Please wait patiently until then. You must be exhausted from the journey here, so please get some rest. I won't take up any more of your time. Dinner is served at six. The servants return to their quarters at eleven, and they prepare breakfast at six in the morning. Feel free to ask if you need anything else. Thracian girl carrying the head of Orpheus on his lyre. It's a part of my father's collection. According to my previous investigations, it should have been sold off by our greedy relatives, just like the painting in the living room. But someone has brought it back here again. This used to be my bedroom. But it has been modified into a guest room now. Not a single trace of my past life can be seen here. the chance to discuss this book with Mr. Orpheus. I need to learn more about the environment here before I can proceed to the next step. There's nothing else to record for today. I paid special attention to the surroundings on the way here. And I didn't expect to return here like this. Even though the interior of the second floor has changed, the entire building seems to be an intentional restoration of the main building from back then. So this floor plan father drew himself should be of use. Maybe I should investigate the first floor today. 
it will all become harder to control once the other two guests arrive tomorrow. But I must wait until the servants go to sleep. So where should I start? This used to be my favorite spot to play as a child. My playmate would sit at the end of this dining table and scribble down interesting short stories before reading them to me. Strange vegetation that doesn't fit in with the other plants in this greenhouse. It seems to be specially grown. Or maybe I should try to learn more from an expert in this field. There is another place. A place that only the owner of this manor knows about. These sculptures are mechanisms designed by Mr. Lapadura, and all the doors in this manor can be opened with the Nightingale Song.
Someone is using this place. Is he back? What's this? A diary? The girl mentioned in here. Emma Woods. Is she the gardener who went missing in the city? to them. These records sound absolutely crazy, but all of them seem linked to the cold case I was investigating. It's getting late, and the servants are about to wake up. I should get back to my room. The content of the diary from my first day of investigation left me restless all night. Those referred to as hunters and those strange events are far beyond reason. But the records do reveal a frightening truth. Perhaps I can only find out what they experienced by experiencing it for myself. Did you sleep well, miss? Breakfast is served. Feel free to enjoy some in the dining room. The butler seems to know the preferences of each guest. I wonder which one was prepared for me. Her face may be hidden away, but based on the skin of her neck, she's definitely still young. She has a tall and toned figure, so she's either of Eastern European descent or engages in outdoor activities all year round. No expensive accessories, but the quality and tailoring of the clothes are superb. I can tell she's wealthy 
and isn't fond of extravagance. Good morning. You must be Mrs. Plinius. A reporter. Nellie Plinius. Nice to meet you. Were you just at the greenhouse? Yes. The lord of this manor was growing some special plants, so I was conducting some initial observations. Oh. You study botany too? My husband was very skilled in that field, and I helped him with some of his research, so I've dabbled in it a little. May I ask why you came here? There's a unique species of bees nearby. I'm here to study them. You have my condolences. <sighs> Risk is always present in life. Just like it is in research, it is in the past. Are the special plants you mentioned earlier those ferns? Why are they growing here? It is quite unusual indeed. With the exception of a few plants like cornflowers, most ornamental plants prefer acidic soil. Those ferns are no exception. The lord of the manor prepared a type of artificial soil just to grow it. I've only ever seen that kind of soil owned by a family of aristocrats in the Mediterranean. Good morning, Mr. Kreberg. Good morning. I can't tell if it's a lack of rest or something else. But Mr. Kreberg looks a little upset. I presume you're in the novelist the butler mentioned. Dressed in the latest design, with carefully groomed hair and accessories, Perfect for a rising star in the world of novelists. There are wet spots on his cuffs that look like the work of dew. Where did he go so early in the day? It seems Orpheus's work has brought him a considerable amount of income. I've read many books written by Orpheus, but I've never met you in the flesh. Good morning, Mrs. Plinius. I didn't expect to see you here. Good morning, Mr. Orpheus. Good morning. I'm Orpheus, a novelist. It's an honor. A reporter. Is Orpheus your real name? Forgive me, miss. Only my pseudonym can be used in public. It's part of my agreement with my publisher. That's all right. We're not here to socialize anyway. Mr. Butler, are there any plans for today? When will we get to meet the Lord? My Lord invites all of you to Kreberg Racecourse at the west of the manor this afternoon. Kreberg Racecourse? I thought it was abandoned after... that incident. It is as you say, the racecourse is not active. My lord merely asked that all of you go there this afternoon. Besides that, please keep the promise you made upon accepting the invitation. Do not wander around at night, and do not leave the main building before receiving a second invitation. Butler seems to know something. But relatively speaking, I'm more interested in what Mr. Orpheus mentioned. 
Mr. Orpheus, what does the thing you mentioned earlier refer to? Around ten years ago, an Irish nobleman, Menace du Capet, acquired this manor. His noble conduct was very popular. The middle-class families in the vicinity hoped to marry off their daughters to him. But Manus fell in love at first sight with a noblewoman from Austria, Mary. However, Mary grew depressed after the wedding. The depression was attributed to Mary's lack of suitable social venues. Manus built a race course for her. The horse races there soon became the hottest social event in town. Everything seemed to be going in the right direction, until Mary committed suicide in the race course, and an ominous air filled the place. The tragedy didn't end there. Not long after Mary's death, racehorses galloped out of the track and caused a fatal stampede, ultimately embroiling Manus in a lengthy lawsuit. Maybe it was the pressure from the claimants, or it was the sorrow from the death of his wife. Manus went mad, and he was never seen again. As for the manor, it was sold off by Manus's creditors. Why is the race course called Kreeberg? Kreeberg was the maiden name of the wife of the manor's previous owner. It seems like he really loved his wife. So why did Mary take her own life? There are many theories about that. Some say Mary had an affair with a jockey, and she was condemned for it. She couldn't take the pressure, and took her own life. Of course, some say it was a murder, disguised as a suicide. After all, there is always a price to pay for being unfaithful. Just like those insects, right? Mrs. Plinius? I didn't expect you to be so interested in etymology, Orpheus. However, insects are unlike humans. They do not betray easily because there is more than a single price to pay. Speaking of which, we have a Kreeberg with us too. I'm sorry to say that I'm French. Forgive me, but I wish to rest a while longer. <laughs> I'll see you in the afternoon. It's common knowledge that the Mary from Austria, whose head and her crown fell together, was from France. I'm going to continue my research in the greenhouse. I'll see you both in the afternoon. I plan to have another look at the collection in the living room. See you in the afternoon, Miss Reporter. There seems to be more to their relationships. I should get a better understanding of my playmates before the game begins. Hmm. We'll start with the famous novelist. Mr. Orpheus, you're interested in music too? <laughs> It fascinates me, but unfortunately, I'm not good at it. Do you play the piano, Miss Reporter? A little. Ah, then why don't you play me a song? I'll tell you about my new book in return. The White Stallion of Death? Huh? <laughs> that story's been finalized. It's another story that I'm working on. A story that's even more fascinating.